we all know medication adherence is very important uh, to manage chronic conditions. These medications need to be taken on a regular basis. And due to many of the social and economic inequities that have occurred over time, there are certainly disparities um, in medication adherence among uh, certain race and ethnicities. Um, and that's due to lack of trust, language barriers, um, uh, economic barriers. Uh, so in SCAN's population, what we saw was that there was a 3% gap in medication adherence between the black and Latinx members um, versus white members. It was 85% versus 88%. Um, and in adherence, um, that is a, a significant gap. Um, and we see this across many of our customers as well, where one of the predictors of non-adherence happens to be that race and ethnicity data. Well, I think it starts with number one, an alignment in mission. Um, so SCAN as an organization has um, a, a tremendous goal, an important goal to um, eliminate some disparities in health in the organization. We too have um, dis eliminating disparities as a key goal in mind in our organization. We come at it in a different angle. We're not a health plan, but we're a technology company. So we try to address it um, through our technology and technology-enabled services. Um, and it's an important part of our mission and what we do at Arene. So the two organizations came together um, and uh, we provide the technology platform, our medication intelligence platform, and that enables um, scan care team members and we supplement with our clinical team as well to provide culturally and linguistically sensitive care. Yeah, so um, with our platform and what AI allows us to do is take into account hundreds of data features that are there. So we can pull in um, the economic um, factors that we see in the data, their, um, the cultural and demographic type of information, and we look, look across hundreds of data features, taking into account the social and behavioral elements as well. Um, so AI allows us to take advantage of all this data that's there and um, look to understand the causes of disparities and understand the reasons for things like not adherence so that we can further personalize care. Something else that we do in our platform is, um, you know, the main things we do, we have models that target the right members for outreach and models that target the right intervention. AI helps with all of that. And then what we're doing is we're looking at which interventions are leading to the best outcomes in which member populations. And there is a built-in feedback loop that constantly looks to continue improvement. And some of the um, examples, um, so we do something called adherence trajectory modeling with the data and that allows us to look at patterns of adherence, which members are going in and out of adherence, which members are likely to um, stay non-adherent over time and understand those predictors and those characteristics of those members. So then we can build interventions around um, specific interventions to personalize care. As a very specific example, Example, one of those predictors is, of course, race, race and ethnicity and language barriers, which is why we do the cultural linguistic matching of care team providers with the uh, matched member. Um, another example is behavioral health diagnoses is also a predictor of um, discontinuing therapy and non-adherence. So when we see a behavioral health diagnosis, we connect the member right away to a pharmacist uh, to have uh, more uh, involved adherence counseling. Yeah, so what we found in SCAN specifically, um, we, we actually, uh, this past year, um, we took a, a member population historically non-adherent, and we, and this was a black Latinx population, and we were able to move them from uh, 50 to 60 percent adherent to over 80 percent. So this is huge um, and substantial improvement in medication adherence, and that was through the help of this technology-enabled approach, helping to understand what the true barriers of non-adherence are. Um, just 
as a one patient case study, and we share this in the presentation, there was um, a member with, um, I think, perceived uh, low health literacy, not true low health literacy. And she was um, a black um, elderly woman. Her name is, we'll call her Joan for the purposes of um, uh, HIPAA. And she, um, she actually um, was quite educated and uh, was, it was very intelligent. And she kept asking her care providers at the long-term care facility where she was staying for a list of her medications, for more information. Um, and she felt like her care providers made the assumption that she would not understand. So she never received that information. So again, through our, um, we were able to match that member through our workflow engine with a black uh, pharmacist. This pharmacist can understand where she's coming from because she often gets treated the same way where people uh, make assumptions about um, her, um, her as well. So she's able to approach her um, and um, explain all her medications. And now um, this um, Joan, who was historically non-adherent, is now taking, she's written down all her medications. She wanted to understand the reasons. The pharmacist was able to explain the reasons why she needed to take these medications. And now she's taking them perfectly adherent every single day. I mean, I think um, these approaches to reduce health disparities is uh, becoming uh, more and more highlighted. It's so important. It's a problem. Disparities in healthcare cost, cost an additional $93 billion in um, healthcare costs alone every year. Um, so CMS has now, you know, done um, a lot more around this and put more focus on it, which I think is a good thing. So policy changes are underway. They have a framework for health equity that follows a lot of the same principles that we are trying to follow at Arene from using the data, gathering more data, right, understanding the underlying causes, and then um, building the capacity and um, ways to address um, disparities in healthcare.